<laughs> Riley and I are going free diving together for the first time ever. That's job, boys. Danny, you see the feet? We were standing <laughs> all in the core. It's just kind of spiraling through the mooring field, hitting other boats. And I was like, whose boat's this? And he goes, it's ours now. <laughs> I'm Elena, and this is Riley. And this is our home, La Vagabond. <laughs> We've been sailing around the world for the last five years and have recently found ourselves with a stowaway. Meet Lenny. Subscribe and welcome aboard. You and me. Days have gotten long. Home feels like. We're currently on a mooring ball in the sheltered harbour of Hopetown, here in the Abaco Islands. It's been so nice staying in one spot for a while, getting into a bit of a routine, hanging out with friends. Although we have been planning our sail route out of here for a few weeks time. The open ocean has already started calling us. This morning, we're going ashore to stretch our legs and have a poke around. We have to show you the village of Hopetown before we leave. It's really cute and picturesque. Wake up in the morning and find your peace of mind. I stepped in a really weird puddle when I was walking. So I was looking at one of my shots on the camera and it was like a drain and now my foot is covered in something weird. Hush, hush, honey, don't you go and cry. The grass ain't always Hi. greener when ah. you go and die. Ah. Ah. You gotta go. When I'm walking around with him like this, it feel, feels like I'm a... Uh, like a big dude, like with a, like I feel like I should be holding a couple of beers and walking around because I'm always like. That's what you feel like when you're pregnant. Do you? <laughs> yeah, a big dude. What's up? But you can't drink the beers, it's not fair. <laughs> Comes a time in a man's life when he tells a tale he needn't tell. Hush, hush, your honey, don't you go and cry. The grass ain't always greener. Alright, see you guys later. Take it easy. Thanks, mate. Alright, take it easy. Mm. Very nice. <laughs> How's the serenity? How's the serenity? Bouncing, bouncing, go, 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 yeah. go, go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Pretty funny when they jump, like he looks like he's Irish dancing. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> and I are going free diving together with Mike for the first time ever. And first time Lenny spent. And been kind enough to offer to watch Lenny. So Hannah had offered to watch Lenny for us so that Riley and I could go freediving together for the first time in literally forever. It felt like I was missing a limb not having Lenny nearby, but I knew this was going to be so good for the both of us. Mike took us out on his awesome fast runabout boat so that we could get out deep to some cool spots. There were a lot of loggerhead turtles cruising around and the sea life really seemed to put on a show for us today. I put him on it. <laughs> <laughs> I put you on all your fish. <laughs> you too, actually. I didn't get anything. <laughs> nice job, boys. How was it? <laughs> Did you have fun here with all the babies? Yeah? 
Well, we're going to take Lenny off Hannah's hands, even though she did a fantastic job. <laughs> Apparently they just slept the whole time, which is amazing. Uh, and we're going to go fill up the fish. I'm not. I'm going to watch and the boys are going to fill up the fish. <laughs> Stay at the marina for the filet. Hana and Mike managed to track down the lady who ran the swimming lessons here for free. This is hilarious. Lenny's so excited. Lenny was well and truly due for his first freediving lesson. The lady basically taught us four skills that we were to repeat over the coming months. I think I may have been a little too brutal with the whole blow and dunk thing. I think I was a million times more stressed out about the event than Lenny and I was petrified of him swallowing water. So in my head, the super fast dunk after I saw him holding his breath was crucial. But I would later learn I needed to be way more slow and calm. Poor Lenny. <laughs> we raise him tough here on the Vagabond. <laughs> So then I automatically have my other hand under his head. <laughs> what are you, a rookie scuba diver with your mask on your head? You know when you first learn something and you get taught all these rules and then when you're not a beginner anymore you decide You go back to the easy way. Alright, tell us about Annapolis please. So we're going to be at the Annapolis Boat Show which we've mentioned in the past but it's it has been secured for a while. We just want to remind everyone. I was at the Miami boat show. We just dropped there. I bolted down there last minute to catch up with Mathieu and Xavier and all the all those guys. But anyway, it's always really good to hear from people. I, I heard quite a few times I um, we bought a boat or we're looking at a boat 100% um, because of you guys. And hearing those stories is wild. Uh, it makes what we're doing completely worth it. And anyway, uh, it's. It will be good for us to hear from you guys at Annapolis. So we're going to be there the whole time, hanging out. Um, there'll be we're going to do a, a catch up for all of our patrons, a separate thing. But just in general, we'll be there. We might have a stall set up, and we'll certainly be selling t-shirts and kicking around, having a good time. So and this I'm the boat's going to be, gonna be there. So we're really diverting course to make sure we can get there. So and everyone can meet Lenny. <laughs> Ham it up with your dimples. Yeah, cool. Um, subscribe if you're new here, and people have been missing out on the video, so ding the notifications Once bell. Once and for all, just ding it. <laughs> We're going swimming at Tahiti Beach. This is the last of the good weather. Tomorrow it's supposed to get really bad, so... Did you say Tahiti Beach? I didn't say Tahiti Beach. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to your butt? <laughs> I, um, sat down in the beanbag at the front and it was all... Full of water. <laughs> Felt amazing. It's hot. You're doing it! Yay! <laughs> So excuse my sweaty face, but I am going to make it home just in time before this massive squall hits. This is the bad weather we were talking about. I'm home. 
Are you alright? I'm pretty bored. Oh, what's that? <laughs> oh. Good job, Dad. There's a huge storm coming. I saw that. I reckon this is the bad weather. <laughs> oh, this is it. <laughs> So Lenny's woken up and I, <coughs> oh my gosh, please don't rip that hair out. Oh, it's too early for that. Let go. Oh my God. So as I was saying, it's 3 a.m. We just woke up. I heard some commotion and a boat's dragging on its mooring. So Riley's just jumped in the dinghy and he's headed over there to try and help with a rope. <sighs> Adventurous morning. It's just kind of spiraling through the mooring field, hitting other boats. Good, me and some guys got it done. Oh, we just heard a loud noise and you go. What the heck was that? Yeah, and I was like, Rax. Yeah, meanwhile, there's a boat spiraling. And he didn't find the owner. There's no owner on board, it just broke free of its mooring. Me and another, I jumped on board whilst one guy got a dude from a big super yacht to get his tender which had 90 horsepower mm. so he could stop it from blowing further and um, we like nudged it in closer to a, a uh, mooring ball so our rope is tying is we used to tie it off to the mooring ball like at great length and then we got a second one to cinch it in a bit closer it's really unlucky yeah I don't know how many it knocked into me on the way down. I went and saw different people like on the way there because I couldn't see it. I just knew there was a big commotion and Elena uh, had seen that there was one free. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know how you're going to see it, but I was watching from a distance. Like... I took a rope but not a flashlight. Mm. Everyone had flashlights and no rope. So we all worked <laughs> together. One guy came on board and I was like, whose boat's this? And he goes, it's ours now. <laughs> That's so funny. That was funny. That's really funny. Good job. It's honestly like doomsday today. On top of the boat dragging, I saw a telephone pole this morning sparking and like, yeah, the sparks are flying off into the ocean and it looked pretty crazy. And now there's a bunch of cars over there trying to fix it, I guess. But very strange morning. I had to go back to the boat to claim our line that we'd used last night to secure it. I needed to find one of their own lines to replace it with. And I can be a man, be big and tough. For you, darling, there won't be enough. I would learn to move mountains, and I learn to part the sea. Whatever you want, whatever you need. It was a good thing that I found one. It feels so wrong to be on board someone else's boat. Be the sun peeking through on that cold winter day. If I could change a thing, you know, nothing would be changed. Cause I love you so, and I'm glad you came. Oh, you walked into my life. What's happened? Oh, we just got a little bogged. <laughs> now my thumb's bogged in the sand. Don't lose it. No, it's your dad, Dad. It was actually blowing 30 knots out there on the windward side of the island, but you certainly couldn't tell here. We decided to hang out for a few days on our mooring ball that we hoped was better secured than our neighbours. The mooring ball man, Mr Truman, assured us that it was. <laughs> oh, I got home 
As always, thank you for following. Next week, we decide to give this land thing a bit of a go. You're better than any other man. You're doing good, babe, nearly there. You until we all go. They say there are two types of sailors, those who run aground and those who will. While I wait for high tide, check out this episode where Lavaga ran aground.